Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So I thought I would revisit some of my old tutorials and I was looking back at the floating tiered card that I shared with the Daisy May image of the lady bursting out of the birthday cake. It was over a year ago and I thought it'd be nice to do a single version of that. So I've done a five by seven single tiered floating card. I don't know, it might be slightly different in the title of this video, but basically when it opens up, you've got these tiers. So it will be displayed like this or slightly in front of each other but you know that distance apart like so it's a really fun style dead easy if you've made my original version of this then you'll know exactly how this one goes and then you can see that it just displays really nice so if you've got papers that are just so pretty you want to show them off i think it's a lovely style card for that it's got those angles i always say anything that's got kind of angles and things is great for masculine makes as well so i think it's going to be a great card for that but also if you were to cover this with florals you can have florals over kind of hanging each of these tiers and it will all still stay within that five by seven size it's also got a bit of a book feel to it the way you kind of you know can open the sides here so i think that would work well you could have different sentiments and different images on here and then this is where i'm going to be writing my message but again you could have it on the very back if you wanted to i think i'm going to be revisiting this in a six by six size as well it's just a really fun style but like i said if you want to see the double version check out the videos that i will have linked now and also at the end so very easy to make so let's get started so i'm using this older paper pad here it's called back to basics from dovecraft and it's the berry blush one i just loved all the purple colors there you don't need 12 by 12 pattern paper to make the card at all. It's just the ones I decided to use. And then for the sentiment, I've already stamped it and it's using this set here, which was a creative stamping one. It's relatively new. I can't remember the name of it, but again, it'd be linked below the video. But I love this one here, hoping you always have a reason to smile. And I just used one of the ink cubes from the Papercraft Society kits. It was just quite a good match with the papers that I've got here. And I've got one of the little wooden butterflies here, which was from the... Butterfly Wishes collection, I think it was, by Dovecraft. So I've already gone ahead and stuck most of it down. It's a pretty simple fold. So you want a piece of six and a half by seven. Along the six and a half side, you're gonna score at half and one and a half. Then you want a piece of six and a half by five and a half. This measurement here, you can have whatever you want. You know, you don't have to have them I've got, what is it, five and a half, and then I've got another tier of four. So I've done one and a half inches between mine, but you might want to do one inch between them. Like I said, check out that tutorial of the original one. Um, you can see that, you know, they do vary. So again, yeah, six and a half, that same score. So half and one and a half. And then, like I said, this piece is four by six and a half. And again, half and one and a half. And then for the mats and layers for the front, or for the tiers then i've got this piece here for the very back so this is four and three quarter by six and three quarter for the mirror and then four and a half by six and a half for the pattern paper and then the next one down is again four and three quarters this is by five and a quarter so then it'll be four and a half by five for the pattern piece and then again this one four and three quarters this one is three and three quarter so then your next one down will be four and a half by three and a half and then for the very front this one is five by two and a half and this is going to go on top so this is four and three quarters by two and a quarter and then the pattern paper is four and a half by two they're just all going to stick on top of each other and go on the very front and then for inside this is where i'm going to have my message it's going to be stuck on this one here this one here is well i've done three and one eighth by four and one eighth and then the white piece will be two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths not quite sure why i did the one eighth so all of these are going to fold in like this you want these pieces to have a mountain fold and you're going to come down from the top one and a half inches if you open it out so you've got your one inch and your half inch on your uh, right hand side and you want to mark down one and a half which i already have here okay what you're then going to do is you're going to cut across to the first score line there that half inch piece and then you're going to cut up on the diagonal to that top piece like so and then the next tier will fit 
on top of that one and it will hide behind it. So I'm just going to take a little bit off of the ends there, like so. Okay. Again, if I hold it out that way now, because these are going to be on the left, you can see you come down to the one and a half and then you just cut across. So the next one here, just flip it over. Again, I'm going to come down one and a half, like so. Cut across. And then cut up and across. If you want to draw, you know, a pencil line first, so you know you're going to get it nice and straight. And then again, just cut those bits. And then the last one, again, I've got the folds on the right hand side. Just going to mark down one and a half. And again, cut across and then up and across, like so. Okay, so you want three pieces that look like this. I'm going to take my largest mat and layer and stick that one on there first. And then the next one, stick that onto there. It's just a bit easier to do these when they're all separate. And then this one is going to go on here. I'm going to stick these two on top of each other, but I'm going to stick the this panel when it's all together because you want to make sure you hide that one the sentiment and the decoration I'll do all that at the end okay so that's all my panels stuck down so next we can put it all together so you want to take the main one and you're going to run your glue all down this half inch tab and fold those both in to the card take the next one fold in those pieces and you're going to line this up with the bottom corner all up the left side here all down here so now that's attaching itself to the back so whilst that's drying I'm then going to take my glue and add it onto this one again fold that all in and line it up with the bottom and then oh, can take the little you might not need to take the ends off but it's always worthwhile doing just in case anything does kind of poke out like so and then again and then that last panel line it up with the bottom left corner right across so you can see now we've got the tiers it's just like the other tiered box style card that i did at christmas it's just that single you know half that we're doing give that a minute all to dry and now you should have something like this so you could have images sentiments whatever on each of those panels i'm now going to stick this one down so this is why i said do it when you put it all together because it needs to come down so it hides behind that panel there so i'm going to stick mine just about there and then i've got my sentiment which is going to overhang and i'm going to have it there and then i've got my butterfly which is going to be that i mean you could have the sentiment on that one even on the top one, lots and lots of ways to change this up. And there you have it, it's a really simple fold. The original one was very simple as well. It was just the colouring of the image on that one that took its time. But you can see there when it stands, it's got a really nice profile, really interesting. You can pull it out like this as well. It's up to the person how they want to display it. I think that looks really nice as well. And you really get to see all the lovely pattern paper. Again, it's hard to see, but that's how it looks displayed slightly off to the left or just slightly in front of each other like so. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and a revisit of the floating tiered cards that I shared last year. I will, as always, link what I've used in the description box below. I'll have those tutorials coming up now as well. So if you want to go and watch those next, you can. And as always, if you've enjoyed today, give me a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and that way you won't miss out on any future videos. See you all again soon. Bye.